So in this case, we are going to notice that for a non-inverting operational amplifier, the input voltage is now connected to the positive. And that means we are going to have this situation of a, uh, our output voltage also in reference to the input being a positive. So it follows that if this input voltage is a positive, this time we are going to notice our output voltage also being a positive, which opposes what we had on an inverting amplifier. So what are the formulas that you are going to need or the calculations that we are going to make as long we are working with a non-inverting operational amplifier? Number one, you are going to need the output voltage as usual. Our output voltage is going to be given by the formula. Uh, that's Rn plus Rf over Rn times the input voltage. So this time you are going to multiply, uh, you're going to have Rn plus Rf over Rn times the input voltage. So if you are to notice, let us go back to our mathematical simplification, A plus B over A like this. We do understand that this can be separated in the form of A over A plus B over A as long each and every term is affected by the denominator. So this can cancel and give us one plus B over A. This is what we understand from our mathematical concept. So are we seeing that it is the same because R in here is in the denominator and there is also an R in here. So we can separate this as R in over R in plus Rf over Rn, we are separating this by the denominator. Each and every part affected by the denominator. So this can cancel and we obtain one. So you see this formula given from your formula sheet given as one plus Rf over Rn. That is where it was being taken from times Vn. So meaning to say we can use this formula as it is or we can simply use from uh, this formula like this. And this one is better for you to understand it that way because that is how you are given from your formula sheet also. They presented this formula this way. Uh, even if you use uh, the hands-on, they used uh, this formula this way. So it is going to be best for you to understand that way because at the end of the day, guys, like I always say, it's you and the formula sheet in exam. There's no other one who's going to come with any other formula for you. So it's better for you to understand how they give you in exam. All right. So that is uh, what you're going to have for the voltage uh, output, which is our output voltage. Another thing that we we'll need again is the voltage gain. Just like what we had before, we are going also to need the voltage gain. So the voltage gain is not going to change, guys. It's always... Uh, the concept of being output over the input. So it's V out over V in. So this V out over V in can be presented from this part here. This here represents your gain. As long as you're given this presentation, guys, V out times some, because we do understand this. Let, let's go back to the, let's make V out the subject. If we make V out the subject, it's going to be like this, V out, is equal to gain times V in. So are we seeing that what multiplies V in, what multiplies this V in is the gain. What is multiplying V in here, here is your gain. That, that's how you can simply take your gain. So meaning to say gain can be taken from this R in plus R F over R in. But we saw that this R in plus R F over R in is the same that can be presented this way. So we can write this as one plus RF over RN. So as long as you have to calculate uh, the gain, depending with what you are given, any of these formulas can be useful. All right, so let us consider, just like the previous case, uh, this is from hands on, and as you can see, they gave us uh, the values that are for a non-inverting operational amplifier, this time none. Inverting operational amplifier, we are given uh, the input voltage, uh, which is Vn, 3 volts, and also the input. So if we can to check here, they 
they just repeated like the values they gave us when we were working with uh, an inverting operational amplifier. And it's just, it's just actually the same question. Determine by calculation the value of the output voltage. When the following resistance values are inserted for the feedback resistor. So it's just like the previous question that we had, if you still remember, when we were calculating for the inverting. But this time, it is just that we are working with a non-inverting. All right. So we do understand that we are given our RF uh, there, which is 300 ohms. The first one is 300. So we do understand that from our calculation, our voltage output is given by 1 plus RF over R in times V out. Uh, times V in, sorry, times the input. Or you can just use uh, this one that he had a combined part of this one, R in plus RF, depending uh, maybe the textbook that you are using. But like I said, in exam, guys, you won't be having your textbook. You'll be having formulas which are from the department. The formulas that are there as a guidance, do you understand them? If you do not understand those formulas, what if you forget the way that you present? So it's best that you also understand how your formula sheet present. All right, so that's one plus our feedback, 300, which is the one that we are given this time as 300. So that's 300 over R in, which is 150. Whatever that you have here, you multiply to the input voltage, which is three volts. So that is going to give us uh, the output voltage. And that was going to give you uh, nine volts. So in this case, Number two is just a continuation of this part. This time, our RF is being 500. So meaning to say our V out is going to be one plus RF, which is now 500. So our feedback is 500 over the input. The input is not going to change times the input voltage, which is still uh, three volts. So this was going to give us uh, the output voltage of 13 uh, volts. In the same sense, you can also calculate number three uh, using the same concept. In this case, we are going to apply same concept. This time, our feedback is 1,500. So meaning to say we can calculate the output using the same formula. V out, it's one plus RF over R in. Our RF being 1,500 over the input of 150 times the input voltage, which is three volts. So calculating this, you are going to obtain uh, the output voltage of 33 volts. And they are asking you that having obtained the output voltage values for different feedback resistors, what conclusions can be made concerning the answers? In your answer conclusion, you are also to refer to the answers you obtained in example one above, meaning to say they wanted you to refer to that one that we had when we're dealing with uh, an inverting. But uh, for us, we're just going to relate to what we are seeing in this case because that one it was on its own. So in this case, we can see that the moment we increase this because the values here, they're increasing 300, 500, 1,500. What is happening with the voltage? 9, 13, 33. The values are also increasing. So an increase in the feedback resistor increases the voltage also. That is the condition there. It increases the voltage also. All right, let's consider another question. Calculating the voltage gain and output voltage for a non-inverting op amp. A non-inverting op amp is the input voltage. You're given the input of 0 0.5, the input resistance of 1.2 feedback. 14 kilo ohms. Calculate the voltage gain and the value of the output voltage, which is V out. All right. We saw that from our formulas, gain can be obtained if you are given the output over the input, but we do not have that. And I said this also can be given as 1 plus RF over RN, which we saw from uh, that RN plus RF over RN. So it is up to you guys, which part are you going to apply or to use? So in this case, guys, I'm just going to take this one. So our voltage gain uh, from one plus RF over R in, just going to substitute in this case, that's one plus RF feedback. 
being 14 kilo ohms. So that's 14 times 10 to the exponent of 3 over R in, which is 1.2 times 10 to the exponent of 3. So that was going to give us uh, the voltage. So as you can see, guys, these two can even cancel. They are the same. But do not worry. Even if you do not notice that, just leave it like that. You are going to obtain uh, exact answers. So that was going to be 12, 667. So this is gain. The gain it's unitless. We do not have units for the gain. And the output voltage. So we can just manipulate this formula of gain to calculate the output voltage now. Yes, we can go back to that part. I'm not saying it's wrong to go back to the formula of uh, finding the output voltage in the form of 1 plus RF over R in times what? Times the input voltage. I'm not saying it's wrong. You can use that. But what did I say about this? It represents what gain. This is the one that you calculate here. Guys, look. This section here, this section here, this section is the same section here that we're calculating here. 1 plus RF over RN. You already calculated that. So meaning to say your output voltage is simply going to be this representing your gain times the input voltage. Or you can simply make it the subject here, cross multiply. So you already have calculated your gain, which is this. So it's going to be 12, comma, uh, 6, 6, 7 times the input voltage. What was your input voltage? 0, 0,5. So there we are going to multiply to 0, 0,5. That gives us the output voltage, which was going to be 6,334 volts. Even if you were to substitute back, you did not notice that gain. Use this formula, guys. You are going to obtain the same answer. This is the same formula. This here represents this. So there's nothing. You can go back to your original formula, the one that you are used to. In case you did not realize that, that gain can be used. You can use back the normal formula that you are used to. Example 5.17 from the TVET series we are given. Calculate the field resistance for a non-inverting op-amp. A non-inverting op-amp is this gain, the voltage gain. Remember about this gain, 12 volts. We had, I mean, 12 as our gain. Where was this taken from? The gain was taken from the output voltage over the input. Still remember that? Output over input which we said it can be written as 1 plus RF over RN. Which can be in whatever way that, guys, that you understand. If you want to write it in this form of RN plus RF over RN, it's, it's your choice. So they gave us that gain to be 12. The input resistance to be 13, uh, to be 1,3 kilo ohms. Calculate RF. So, case we can simply use the gain to this formula or to this one because these two, they are just the same. It's up to you which one do you want to work with there. Are you going to work with this part or are you going to work with this part? So, as for me, guys, I'm just going to work with this part. It's easier because I, it's, it's the part that you have in your formula sheet, like I said before. So, if you understand that, it's going to be uh, good. So, our voltage gain, since it is equal to 1 plus uh, RF over RN, and we need to calculate RF. Just we need to substitute. What is our gain? That is 12. So 12 is equal to 1 plus RF. We do not have RF, but we have R in. That's 1,3 times 10 to the exponent of 3. We have this. So what we simply need is to make RF the subject. So how are we going to make RF the subject? Let's start with this one because it has no effect to this. So you can simply take it to the other side. It subtracts. So 12 minus 1, which is 11, is equal to uh, RF over 1,3 times 10 to the exponent of 3. So how are we going to have RF? This is same as over 1. So simply do cross multiply. So if you cross multiply, that's 1 times RF, which is RF is equal to the product of these two. So that's 11 times 1,3 times 10 to the exponent of 3. That was going to give us the value of what? Of the feedback. So as we can see, guys, 
what does this is resistance what does 10 to the exponent of 3 represents it represents kilo 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 from the kilo there so just multiply these two numbers if you're someone just multiply these two and your answer is already in what in kilo ohms so 11 times 1 comma 3 that's 14 comma 3 so meaning to say my answer is already in kilo remember 10 to the exponent of 3 means what means kilo so that's kilo ohms Oh, just multiply direct on your calculator, guys. You have to, you must obtain something like one, four, three, three, uh, three, zero, zero, like that. If you were to multiply direct, which is the same as 14,3 kilo ohms. So these are the typical questions that you must expect to have in your uh, examinations. As you can see, these are examples. Use these examples now to answer questions from your Question papers, try to check how do they ask the questions relate to the formulas that we have listed and also the examples that we've just worked uh, and see if this is applicable. So as you can see, this is the most important part. I'm not saying to use this formula is wrong. You can use it. You can use this formula. It's one and the same. It's one and the same formula. But this one, the advantage is that it's there in your formula sheet as it is. So the moment you see your formula, you just say, okay, oh, this is the formula for this. You can just take advantage of that. So let's revise as much questions as we can.